If you have been using the Elementor page builder, you must be familiar with the term that is called sections and columns. So this one is a section, the entire row is a section and this is a column. So generally when you start creating your website within the Elementor page builder, this is how you create your website. You take a section and then choose your columns and then add the padding and then you simply start dragging the elements within the columns. So for example, if I insert a title heading here and if I insert a text editor here and then I can insert an image here and then I can drag a button here as well. So generally you have been creating website in this way. Now the problem with this approach is that or the limitation with this approach is that let's have a look at this. If I want to align two buttons right next to each other, let's duplicate this button. There is no option for me to align this op these button next to each other until and unless I go to this advanced tab and then I change the width to inline or I use a custom width. So if I make this one as 35 and then if I make the width of this button as 35, now you can see these two buttons are aligned next to each other. Another limitation that we have with this approach is that if I drag an inner section here and then if I try to insert one more inner section inside the inner section, it was not possible. And this was a limitation as well because in some scenarios you want to have inner sections within the inner section then that was not possible. There are many examples of such kinds. I'm not going to go in details with them. But in this video, we are going to see that how Elementor have solved these problems by releasing a new feature that is called Flexbox containers. And what is the right way to use those Flexbox containers within the Elementor page builder. So if you want to learn that how to use the Flexbox container in a right manner, then without further ado, let's get started now. So the first thing that you have to do is to activate the Flexbox container within your Elementor page builder. For that, you can go back to the dashboard of your website. And once you are here in the dashboard of your website, hover over to Elementor and click on settings and then click on features. And from the features, choose Flexbox container, choose active and then click save changes. Once you will do that, this will be highlighted in a green color indicating that the Flexbox containers are now active. Now if I go back to the pages and let's edit the same page with Elementor. Right here you can see we have the same kind of page builder, load animation, everything like how we have in the sections and container. Sections and columns. But the difference is that now we have this container option here available to use. So now if I click on this plus icon we can choose the direction or the structure of our container. So the first thing that you need to learn about this container is the structure itself. So either you can use a column structure or a row structure. The column structure is exactly the same as of what we were using till now using the sections and column approach. So if I use this two column structure here and then from this settings, I choose this child container. So consider this as a parent container and this one as the child container. So if I click this child container right here, you can see the direction as vertical indicating that this container has the direction of column. That means if I drag a title widget here and if I drag an other text editor here, right here, you can see they are sticking like how they used to be. Now, if I use a row direction, and if I try to insert the same heading and the same text editor, they are now striking next to each other. This is the row direction. And this right here is the column direction. So the column direction is exactly the same like how you have before. And the row direction is something new that comes with Elementor container. So once you understand the structure, the next thing that you need to understand is the width right here. So like how you used to have the content width, you can choose as boxed or full width. This is the same option you have available now. You can either choose boxed or you can choose the full width. They'll do the same thing like how they used to do with Elementor sections and columns. Now, one thing that you need to understand here is this minimum height. So with the minimum height, I generally use the viewport height. So if I change this height to 50 viewport height, you can see that our section is expanded to 50 viewport height, but the content is checking 
right at the top. So whenever you will use the container, make sure you use the minimum height instead of using these margins and paddings. Let me explain you why. All of these options that are available here for the containers like justify content, align elements and this gap between elements are going to work when you will use the minimum height and not the margin and padding. Forget about margin and paddings at least for now. So I'm here on the layout tab. Let's have a look at this align items option. So this align item option is currently set it up as stretch. That means that it is automatically taking the entire space that is currently available. Now if I change this to center, right here you can see that the alignment of the items or these widgets inside the containers is changed to center alignment and I can change it to the end as well. So you can use this option here align element align items to align the content within your containers to the start center end or stretch so let's just align it in the center so once you have this option available the next option you need to learn is this direction thing here so generally by default when you will insert a new container either you can use a column direction or a row direction but then you have some additional options available here that are row reversed and column reversed so for example right in this container we have a direction of row so if i change this to row reverse right here you can see this container is now shifted to the end and that container is shifted to the start so in this way you can switch their places as well now if i change the direction of them as vertical and if i will choose column reverse this is the same thing happen but in the column manner so let's just revert it back to the horizontal next option that you need to understand is this justify content option here in order to understand this option you should need some of these widget inserted inside the container so i'll choose this child container now and then i'll change the direction let's keep it vertical or column like how they are and the only thing that i want to do is to increase the width so i'll choose viewport height and i'll make this as 30 and let's just insert a background color so i'll insert a background color and right here you can see we have a background color here okay now for the justify content for now it is set it up as start if i'll change it to center right here you can see the content is now justified in the center and then i can choose end another option that we have now available with the containers is space between so if you will choose the space between this will distribute the space between the elements whatever space will be available inside the container so if your container does not have any space specified it will not calculate that how to distribute the space between the elements so if i change this to start you won't be able to notice any differences here because we haven't set it up a height so in order for this option or this option or this option to work you need a minimum height so i'll choose this as 50 vh now and then we can choose space between space around or space even so this is how these options for the justify content work now let's just duplicate this container and let's change the color of this container i'll duplicate this one more time and then i want to change the color again so probably like this color i'll get rid of this fourth container from here and now we have these three containers now let's suppose that you want to include some spacing between these containers in order to do that you can head over to this option that says gap between elements so change this option to a value i'll change this to 20 px and now the gap between these elements is 20 pixels you can use this option to distribute the gap between the elements that are available here Another thing that I want to tell you about these containers is this option that says wrap. So for example, for now I haven't chosen this wrap option here. If I go to this container and change its width to like 100%, this is supposed to take the 100% width of this entire container. But it is not inheriting the 100%. It is because we have a different option available in the parent container that says row horizontal so in some situation where for example you have these kind of cards in your layout 
and you want to have like two cards in one row and then the next card in another row in order to achieve that kind of layout what you will have to do is to go to this parent container and then you can click on this wrap option and as soon as you will click wrap right here you can notice that the width that we have assigned to this container the 100% is now functional also this space evenly option is also working here because of the viewport height that we have attached so i'll just reduce the viewport height to 20 and then from here i want to reduce the width so for example you want to have two columns in one row and then next two column in another row so for that what i can do is to change the width to 50 percent and then i'll again have to change the width of this container to 50 percent and let's say i want to make the width of this container to 100 percent so 100% means it will take the entire width of the container but the 50% and 50% supposed to align next to each other but they are not aligning. It is because we have a gap between elements set it up as 20px. So 50% plus 50% is 100% plus 20px which is greater than the 100%. That is why they are not aligning next to each other. In order for them to align next to each other, what you can do is to go to your child container and then just reduce the value. Let's make it 49. And then from here, you can make it 49 as well. And now right here, you can see they are aligned next to each other. So in this way, you can align these containers next to each other as well. By the way, I have ton of videos available related to Elementor and WordPress tutorials on my channel. If you are interested in learning WordPress and Elementor in depth, then you might try watching some of those videos. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell icon so that you will always get notified whenever I upload a new video. So let's just see that how you can make these containers responsive. So let's just switch to the mobile responsive mode. So right here you can see they are automatically responsive here. So you don't have to do anything or you will have to do just a very minimal thing here. So if I switch to responsive, right here you can see they are responsive. Let's just check the tablet devices. So on the tablet, you can see they are not staking next to each other. In order for them to stake next to each other, what you can do is to reduce the width. So for now it's is px change it to percentage and this time i want to make it 45 and then for this container we can increase this to 54 percent 54 yeah 54 will work so right here you can see in this way you can make these containers responsive as well so this is all what you need to learn before start using this container if you have learned something new from this video make sure to hit the subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell icon to always get the latest video updates thank you very much i'll see you in the next video